Good morning. How's everybody doing? Hope you guys are doing well on this hump day Wednesday. It feels funny because I was actually just on on yesterday. But I got some more stuff for you guys today. I actually, um, one of the things I noticed is when I get some like recurring situations coming to me consistently from people who I'm connecting with who, you know, are wanting to grow their business, it, it's often like a recurring thing. When I'm getting the same thing all the time, I think, well, maybe, you know, since so many people are coming to me for this particular thing, that uh, other people may need it. And so one of the things that has been consistent for um, several of the people who've reached out to me recently is finding themselves, and excuse me, one second, guys, um, finding themselves having to, like, uh, put things in place at the last minute. And I said, okay, well, if several people are going through this, then maybe this, uh, the answer to that question will be supportive to my audience on Facebook. And so that's why we're talking about momentum and, you know, how to maintain our momentum in building, you know, the business that we're desiring to create and the lifestyle as well. How do we maintain that momentum and continue to grow our business? So that's what we're going to talk about um, on today. Like, how do I keep going? How do I um, make sure that I'm being proactive in my business and not reactive? Because what was happening was, you know, many of the people who were reaching out to me, it wasn't because they knew that they were going to need this strategy later. Most oftentimes it's because they find themselves in a particular situation and now they need the strategy. And so the answer to, you know, not have to put out so many fires and, you know, really maintain growing your business is to focus on your momentum. Somebody put momentum in the comments. Do me a favor. If you're on the broadcast, share it out with another women, woman, service-based business owner, aspiring coach, or salon professional on your timeline. This is going to be good. This is going to be good for everybody because no matter what level we get to in our business, there's always um, a place where we may feel stuck. And I want to talk about the thing that I've recognized in my own business and the people that I help grow their business, uh, what the thing is and why, and then what I do to continue uh, the momentum and continue growing my business. For those of you who've never joined me on a live broadcast, uh, before. A uh, quick introduction before we get into our training. I'm Tanya Wilson Cherry. I am a transformational growth strategist. So growth is super important to me. Matter of fact, it's what many of you aspire to do in your business, continue to grow. Um, but I feel that growth is a full circle experience. Even as an entrepreneur, I feel that our mindset, our personal growth, and our business strategies um, create a full circle experience where we really create the business and lifestyle we love. And that is the exact perspective that I teach from. So I teach my clients how to brand, build, and profit in their business. And branding is super important. Um, excuse me, mainly because your brand is who you are. And many people are in a space in their business where who they were when they first started the business is not who they are now. Or maybe they've started the business in a certain manner and they realize this is not really how I want to run my business. And that's often when someone needs to rebrand their business. And so we have permission to do that. We don't have to continue, you know, operating it the same way. Now, that's completely different from constantly switching lanes. And we're going to talk about that uh, on today as well to make it a little more clear for you where, you know, a person really needs to rebrand and somebody that's just... <clears throat> you know, constantly switching lanes. <clears throat> so that's what I do. I help my clients to brand, build, and profit in their business. And I focus on a three-point perspective, abundance, mindset, principles, uh, personal growth, and business building. I am not only a uh, growth strategist, but I'm a business consultant and a certified life coach. I found 
that my personal life was rolling over into my business. No matter how many strategies and systems I knew, because they are my gifts, they're my superpowers, um, I, they come easy for me. Like coming up with a strategy or system comes easy for me. But when my life was out of order, my personal life was whack. <laughs> my um, personal life eventually rolled over into my business. And so many business owners struggle with things like time management, um, leadership, um, and habits. And so all of that is our personal growth and our personal development, and it affects our business. And so when I really gave myself permission, I decided that I would not just be a business consultant, but I would offer my clients a full circle experience because that's when they really see massive continued growth when they are consistently working on their thinking and their um, personal growth and personal development. How we think is how we're going to build our business. And most oftentimes, whatever level we're currently on, we built our business on the mindset that we had prior to that. And whenever it's time to go to the next level, we normally have to um, learn or unlearn some of the mindsets that we had from the other level, right? And so it always takes, it, it requires you to be in a different space mentally when you're wanting to go to the next level. So if your goal, your goal uh, may be 40,000 when you're first starting out and then it turns to six figure, six figures, your goal you're going to have to have a different mindset to do that because it's going to require different strategies. So that's what I help my clients with, you know, uh, developing the mindset needed to operate at the next level. Um, also, personal growth and business strategies. Hope you guys are doing um, well this morning. So we're talking about how to maintain momentum. That's really when you find yourself in a space of, um, I made a post that was called uh, proactive or reactive. Good morning, Pam. How are you, dear? Proactive or reactive. So what I noticed is that most business owners are reactive in their business. So they're consistently putting out fires. So for instance, I've been getting several calls from business owners who may find themselves in a situation uh, that... Uh, they're having to kind of like rush. I'm going to give you guys an example. So we all know that July, the summer months, are considered the slower months of the year. And a lot of business owners are just putting things in place now in order to get new customers in. That's more of a reactive. That's more like, well, it's slow now. I need to do something different. Or uh, maybe, maybe staff, you know, maybe someone... Uh, needs more staff in their space and they decide that at the last minute and so now they find themselves having to put the systems and everything in place which takes time which also means that they're still losing revenue while they're getting those other things done and so I want to talk to you guys about some things that you can do so that you can continue to have momentum in your business the first one the first very first one right it's to get clear on what you want. You got to get clear on what you want. For instance, if you are a makeup artist and you start your business and you know when, when I get 40 or 50, I'm not going to want to be putting on people's makeup. That's just not what I'm going to want to do if you're a makeup artist. But I still want to be in the industry. So in the very beginning of building your business or at some point if you've already started, you, you have to say, well, what is it that I want to do? So maybe you wanted to develop a team because you've built this amazing clientele and now you can send the team out to do the makeup for you. Uh, maybe you will develop a, a product, a makeup line, and you will wholesale it to other makeup artists. Those aren't things that you decide at the last minute. Hey, Miss Rhonda, how you doing, darling? Those are things that you decide at the last minute, right? So if you know that's the direction that you want to go, while you're servicing the clients yourself, you're also um, developing time to be able to, if you're going to have a team, then you have to say, okay, what does the team need? You're going to need training for the team. You're going to need time in your schedule to train the team. 
You may need a handbook and policy and procedure manual. Those aren't things that you, you plan at the last minute. And so most people, um, maybe it's, maybe you're a personal stylist and you're saying, okay, I don't want to uh, go and style people forever. I know when I look overall at my career, although I love to do that now and I'm passionate about it, it's not something that I'm going to want to have to do forever. So seeing as though, you know, especially for those of you who are maybe five, seven years in, <clears throat> if you already know that, then the way you run your business the entire time is going to be based on that end result. Do you guys get that? And when we aren't clear on where it is that we actually want to go in our business, we find ourselves doing 50 different things. And one thing that happens, hey, Sharonda, how are you, dear? One thing that happens is many people take time for granted. Somebody put people take time for granted. We take it for granted, guys. For instance, this year itself, it's almost gone. It's almost gone. And there were probably goals or things that you wanted to do that, that you haven't done yet. And so what happens is when we're in reactive mode, the time that we would normally spend on the proactive things, the time isn't there because we're constantly putting out fires. So the first thing you want to do is get clear on what it is that you want. So even if you, you are 10, 15, 20 years into whatever service that you're offering to, you know, your customers, because I work with service-based business owners, so they could be, um, they could be a personal chef, it could be a hairstylist, it could be a makeup artist, a massage therapist, a personal stylist, someone who offers a service to someone else and they're providing the service. Even if you're 15, 20 years in and you're saying, in your mind now, in your mind, five years from now, this is not what I want to be doing. I don't want to do the direct, 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 to direct, direct contact with the client. Then the time to prepare for that is not five years from now. It's actually now. I think if you're going to have an exit strategy or transition and maybe you are 15 to 20 years into your career and you're starting to feel like, hey, look, I don't want to be 70, you know, still doing this. Now is the time. And you got to get clear on what it is you want or you'll never know what strategies to begin putting in place. And remember, I said, guys, time, time goes by. It's not stopping. It's not waiting on us at all. The second thing that you need to do <clears throat> is plan ahead. Um, Ms. Rhonda said, that was me. I knew, I knew it. It was uh, 25 years behind the chair. Absolutely. And the thing is, most oftentimes when we go into whatever industry we go into, we're not focused on the end result. We're just focused on something we can play with right now. And what that actually looks like is, I've seen so many seasoned stylists who say, you know, I'm busy, I'm booked, and then you know, a year or two later, they're singing a different story. It's like, baby, I need some clients. And it's mostly because we get comfortable in what we're doing right now and we don't plan ahead. So maybe we stop marketing. Maybe we, you know, I mean, have you all just had like a really good month or maybe a large sum of money to come into your life and you just be like, you know, I can just chill. But eventually, if you're not bringing in more revenue or if you're not attracting people to some type of service that you do that will bring in more revenue, it's going to dry out. The well will dry out, guys. The brook does dry up, <laughs> you know. And so everything that you're doing, uh, because you plan ahead, they're like seeds that you're sowing for the next level. The next thing is to be in expectation. Be in expectation. So if you're saying to yourself, my vision, you know, for, you know, transitioning or exiting out of my career, even if it's not what you're doing today, this is my vision, then you know you should be in expectation. So if, let's use this for an example. If someone told you that they were going to send you a check for a million dollars, right? Right but they were gonna send it to your P.O. box, which is not at your house. And it would arrive to you within six months, 
But the catch was they were not going to tell you the date or even the around about time that it would be coming. Would you be in expectation of that million dollar check? This is a guaranteed check. You know it's coming to you. You know it'll be there within six months. You just don't know the date. And it's at your P.O. box. How many of you are going to, because you're in expectation, you're going to go and check that P.O. box kind of regular? Put me in the comments. If you're going to go and check the P.O. box kind of regular because you are in expectation. So in the beginning, you may check it every week. You may slow down and say, well, I'm just going to go every two weeks. But you're going to have something in your mind because you're in expectation where you're consistently doing that thing. I remember when I first uh, came online and then started offering my courses to um, the beauty industry. I had a young lady to ask me, because I only had seven people in my first class, I remembered it. And a young lady asked me, what would you do if only one to two people, Miss, look, Miss Rhonda said, yes, I would check every single day. And, and what happens is because we're not in expectation, because whatever it is you're saying that you want, there's no way you can really be in expectation of it if you're not showing up for it. Do you guys get that? This is, and I don't want to... Well, I was going to take say I don't want to, but I tell you guys all the time, we build based on our beliefs. So if you really believe in what you're building, then that means you're an expectation of it. And that expectation is going to cause you to put a different type of action towards it, right? So whatever it is that you're desiring to do in your business, you got to be an expectation for that because it's going to cause you to... Um, to just really show up differently. I was sharing with you guys that I had a class and I only had seven people in that class. It was my first class online. And one of my clients said, you know, what if only one or two people came? And I said, I would still come. I would still show up. See, one of the reasons is because that class was not my overall vision. It was just a stepping stone to my vision. That class was a seed for where I ultimately wanted to go, right? Also, it meant that the clients that were one, because I'm secure in the value that I bring, right? I believe in what it is that I'm offering to my clients. I've done my homework. I've actually, you know, been a business owner for years and have the information. Miss um, Rhonda said, shoot, I've had two people in a class and it was wonderful. Absolutely. Now we know that's not our ultimate goal, but it is a stepping stone. So for me, I knew that because I brought value, um, those would be one customers who could also share their experience with me so that I could perfect it. Do you guys get that? I also knew that those clients would tell someone else. I also knew that those clients would more than likely become repeat customers. And those out of those seven people, um, at least 60% of them have gone on to get services uh, with me repeatedly over and over again, right? But if you understand, and this is why many people give up because their vision is no bigger than what they're working on right now. You guys get that? So that means that if what they're working on right now doesn't have this big boom factor, they feel defeated, right? They feel like it was a failure. But when you have a vision that's bigger than what you're actually working on right now and you're and what you're working on right now is a portion of it, you're not defeated. It doesn't feel like failure. So you have to be in expectation of what it is that you're actually building is going to help you guys. The next thing, get your schedule clear. Clear your schedule. This is what I mean by clear your schedule. So for instance, if you are a salon owner, and you know that your ultimate goal is to have six people, four to six people. You got four to six chairs in your salon. You know that that is your goal. Before the people come in, you have to shift your schedule around. If you're still providing services for the customers, you got to shift your schedule around to be able to train people if you're doing a commission salon. Even if you aren't doing a commission salon and one of the things that you want to offer as an added benefit of even people coming to rent a booth there, 
you want to have customers coming to the salon all the time, right? And so you have to create the time to be able to market the business, to get clients in. If you're having a commission salon and you're offering training, you got to have days to train them. So many people end up with staff that leave because the staff have no customers. The staff don't feel as if they're learning anything. This is for commission salons. Um, it happens with booth rental salons as well. But it's because the, the owner never clears their schedule to be able to really run the business. Right. And so that also tells us what our real expectation is. Right. It tells us what we really what we also believe as well. So you got to find a way to clear your schedule. For most of you, um, it may be to to really take a look at your pricing so that you can you know raise your prices. If you're super, super booked, you can raise your prices. That's probably going to clear your schedule up some, but it's not going to cause your revenue to lower. Even though you may lose some people, it will not lower your revenue. You'll just do less people in a less amount of time, and then you'll have time to work the business. You guys get that? Um, the next thing, get a schedule. Get a schedule. And so many of us as business owners, as long as we're working on a client, that is our schedule. But your life consists of more than just your business. Until we get to the space where we understand that our business is only a part of our life, we will continue to try to run our life around our business instead of growing our business around our life. And so many people don't incorporate the, the personal things that they have to do in their lives or the things that they have to take care of in their lives. And, you know, they don't really have a schedule. They don't have a schedule outside of work, right? So that things can flow seamlessly. Um, when you have something, and this is all about how you're going to um, maintain your momentum. Because I share with you guys, I've seen it time and time again. People are super, super booked. And then before you know it, they're wondering, like, where are the clients? Or we run into um, studies show that July statistically is one of the slowest months of the year. This isn't something that we don't know. If we've been in the industry for a minute, it's not new to us, right? So why aren't we creating strategies um, ahead of time instead of having to go into panic mode and not be able to do the things that we would normally do because it's slow? So I want you guys, when you think about your business, think about it in 90-day in time frames. Somebody put 90 day time frames in the comments. Now, this 90 day time frame is not the same for everyone, but if I had to do an average of how long it takes to put a system in place and really be able to effectively see results for, from it, I'm just gonna average it out to about 90 days. Some people will take them, you know, like in a week or two, they're getting results. Some people, six months, some people a year, but on, it, on average, Let's think in 90-day intervals. So if you think in 90-day intervals and you know that um, you need to get new staff, so you got to think that the strategy that you use in order to attract new people into your business, clients, uh, staff, whatever, is going to take you about 90 days. So you're not going to wait until June or July to start putting things in place to accommodate the slow months that you know you have. If you if you're a makeup artist, um, you know um, anybody in the beauty industry. If you're in the beauty industry and you're servicing clients, you know that maybe people get married. More marriages occur a certain time of the year, and so the other parts of the year may be seemingly slow. You're either going to have to really be good at spreading your finances out properly. Or you're going to need to put things in place ahead of time, <laughs> right, in order to combat those what would normally be slow times. And so many of us get like big lump sums of money and then we just kind of chill and then we wake up and we're in this cycle. And what the cycle looks like is us constantly putting out fires and then we can never really focus on a strategy for growing the business. So what we're normally working on is strategies that maintain the business and not strategies that grow it. Do you guys get that? There's a complete difference in those two things, right? So there's a difference in maintaining the business and growing the business. And part of your time should be spent doing both. And a lot of that is going to be your, your marketing systems or your training systems that you may have for your staff. 
I want you guys to shift to this mindset right here, right? I want you to know that a huge part of your business is not only about you. It's not only about you. So think about the people that support you. How much more do they have to support you during slow times? Or when, I mean, I'm just saying, or when things are a little off. And then sometimes as business owners, we wonder why we don't have support from people who are around us. But, you know, some of them are just tired. Some of them may just be tired, <laughs> right? Because we have this big vision that we know is, is doable. We know it's viable, but we're not connected enough to the vision, right, to maintain the momentum in it. Uh, the next thing you got to do is stop stopping and starting. Stop stopping and starting. Take a moment and simply think of something that you started maybe a year ago maybe two years ago that you stopped and think about the fact that it will be finished operating and creating more revenue or or helping to create more revenue in your business had you not stopped how many of you have something now that you can think about that you started and you know that it would work if you worked it but you didn't finish it and a year or two years has gone by and you could be benefiting from that thing now and one of the ways we start, we um, get into the momentum that we need where we aren't starting and stopping projects is when we get clear on what it is that we want. Because many times we'll start and start and stop a project because it doesn't really, we find out like that doesn't fit, right? We realize that thing doesn't even fit, but when you're clear on what it is that you want, if you know that you have a business and you ultimately want to have other people working in the business to help you at the time that you need it is not the time to start working on it, right? It's not the time to create the training program, to figure out, you know, what you may train them on. If you're wanting to develop a product, um, that's not an overnight process. And see, when your schedule is clear, you've already dictated time that you can work on, whether it's research or um, getting the information needed to make that thing actually happen. And many of you are going to have to make a choice. You're going to have to make a choice to slow down and get intimate with your business. Or this is going to be a continuous cycle where you're constantly in reactive mode. So think about the people who support you. Think about those that you support. This is why I say what we're doing is, is so much bigger than us. And some of you, maybe you're an educator, maybe you teach you know, you're supporting those people that you teach. If you have um, staff, you're, so, you know, part of what you have going on is how they're making it out here as well, right? So we got to remember that it's not simply not just about us. Think about your peace. These are some things to think about, your peace. Is it peaceful to, to operate in reactive mode? It's, you have to say, how much longer do I want to keep doing it like this, right? And this is where you have to make those sacrifices to say, I'm just going to slow down for a minute and get a real clear plan, at least one that I can operate off of for 90 days, minimum. But I would say even a year, and those need to at least connect with your five-year goals. So many of you know that you want to eventually, you're at a space where you want an exit strategy, you want, you want to transition out of whatever the service is that you offer, so maybe you want to teach it. You can be a chef, and um, a personal chef, and your way from transitioning from actually cooking to can be to create a course and begin teaching that to other people. Or it can be where you train other people to teach what you cook and then service the clients. It's so anybody who's providing a service, a personal stylist. So maybe you go and dress people, right? And you know that ultimately dressing people is not what you're want, going to want to have to do. So you know you have to have an alternative where you're either training people, right? To dress people. Maybe you've created a course that teaches people how to become a personal stylist. Each of you, once we get to a certain stage, in our business, especially if we have an idea early of what that looks like, we can begin to really become an expert in it 
enough to teach it to someone else. But that it doesn't happen like overnight. Miss Rhonda, you you now teach. I saw Miss Rhonda online for a few years, and then she started offering classes. So it's it's not like this thing that you just do overnight. I mean, you can, but if you want it to be effective, um, you know, it's just not this overnight thing. And so we're constantly in reactive mode, and we lose our momentum because it becomes the reactive mode, putting out fires. It becomes so draining. And so when do you make the decision to say, look, I'm just, I'm going to sit down. I'm going to get somewhere and sit down for a minute and really plan my business out or allow someone like myself to support you in planning that out so that you can have a system so that you don't have to see the cycles all, all over again. The next thing you're going to have to do is protect your process. How many of you have invested so much into your business and career? I'm going to raise my hand. Money, time, energy, resources. Put me in the comments if you've invested a lot in growing your business. Do you know that every time we stop and start, we um, slow up, we actually diminish the pro progress that we've already made? You got to get in a space where you're saying, I'm protecting all of this time and energy and effort that I've already put into this business and you protect it by momentum. Now, some people, they're, they lose, um, Ms. Ronnie says, I'm slow, but like Mr. Dudley says, when the slow one gets it, they got it. Absolutely. So we, we all have different, that's why I know that I'm speaking to an audience of people who may be ahead of the game, uh, people who may have been doing this for quite some time and they, they don't have an exit strategy. They don't have a plan, but they need one um, because their plan has just been to do what they've been doing all the time. I understand that we're all at different levels with different things. One of the biggest things that really blessed me before I opened my business was the fact that I had a mentor. So I was able to see systems and processes and things in advance and have an idea. I knew that I did not want to, one, I knew that I had pretty much, well, I can't say I capped my income, but for what I thought back then, I had capped my income as a stylist. It was like, either you just keep going up on the people, which you can do if you're continuously getting better and you're finding new clients, or you, um, you're going to keep, you're going to work more and it's only 24 hours in a day. So I knew that my next goal was salon ownership so that I could have another, you know, income range, right? So I already knew that, but it was because I had a mentor. When I first started out, I, I didn't have an idea. I just thought, you know, I just go do hair and get a lot of clients and make, make a lot of money. And then when, you know, that began rolling over into my quality of life, my, I was like, I'm missing like all the holidays. I remember one year at 12 o'clock, I took a client. It was Christmas Eve. So it was actually Christmas Day. And I took my last client. And I said, this can't be it. <laughs> you know, this can't be it. And so it was after that point that I went and worked with my uh, mentor and I was able to see it done differently. I was actually exposed to something different. So that was the advantage for me uh, because when I did open my business, I had a handbook and policy and procedure manual. I had been an assistant at the salon that I worked at, so I knew the value and the benefit of having an assistant because it allowed you know the staff to do more customers. Um, I also saw the benefits of having a receptionist, which we called our customer care coordinators, and so I created a, a training program for them. That was the now I didn't see the training part for front desk at my mentor salon because I'm sure that was stuff that they did, you know while I was working or after hours, but I knew what happened for me is once I began like hiring my assistant and I was like, okay, wait a minute. I'm, I have to have a training program for her or if not, I'm going to have to stop and tell her what to do all the time. Well, my first assistant was a guy actually, but my front desk, that's when I really realized it. I said, okay, you can't tell them things to do on a day-to-day -day basis. I created a, a list of things that they did every single day. And then I said, okay, we need a, a marketing plan 
for the year. And then I don't have to constantly go to them and continue to think of things. Of course, we tweak things, but just being proactive about some things is what allowed me to, you know, hire 12 people. And at this time I was still doing hair, but I lessened my hours. I continued to, you know, lessen my hours uh, behind the chair, but we got to be proactive. Um, and then we got to stop, stop, stopping and starting and keep the momentum up in our business. Because if not, it's like the progress that we've made, we, you know, it's, it's not completely down the drain, but we're not protecting the, the process that we've made. And then last but not least, <clears throat> get delivered from people. If you want to maintain growing your business, especially in this social media age, you have to get delivered from people, right? So many of you aren't doing your vision the way you want to do it because there are so many other people who are saying, this is the way to do it. So you hear five different people saying this is the way to do it. I'm going to give you guys an example. So <clears throat> I was studying something scripturally and I was watching um, different pastors or teachers online teaching the same principle on like faith and prayer. And it's like two or three of them would say something completely different. Like this is not the way, <clears throat> that's not the way. And I heard the Holy Spirit so clear, said, read the word for yourself. <laughs> read the word for yourself. So sometimes simply listening to a lot of different people is going to provide you with information, but the information may, may be swayed. And until you actually get in the paint and actually start implementing and then find your way within some of the information you've been given, you're going to always feel stuck. You're, you're going to feel like, well, I shouldn't do it this way. And this person says to do it that way. Pick someone that really aligns with how you feel, how you want to build your business and your life and follow their plan. Begin to actually implement. And then while you're implementing, there's still going to be some things that you decide, I'm going to tweak this a little bit because this works a little better for me. But, you know, it's difficult <clears throat> If you don't get delivered from people, there are, you know, some people online create their content by going and finding what other people are doing and, and disputing the way that they're doing it. That's how they create their post or their memes. And so you got to be really comfortable about how you're building your business and clear about the business that you're building, because there are a lot of opinions that are going to be different from the way that you do it. I, I've seen Miss Rhonda say you know, people were telling her, you shouldn't, uh, I think it was like you were teaching people how to do a roller set or um, things that weren't necessarily the trendy things, right? You know, they were maybe saying that those aren't things that people necessarily want to see. Ms. Rhonda stood right to her vision for her brand and she continued to do what she was good at, which is actually the foundational stuff. So most of the time, the foundational things that are really important, they're not always the popular things in the beginning. You guys get that? And some of you may want to do your thing that may seem basic to everybody else. But one thing about things that are foundational and true to the foundation of, you know, the skill set that you have, or for me, you know, building a business because I teach, um, foundational root principles, they may not always be the most popular, but they'll maintain the longest. Did you guys hear that? So I get people who've been in the industry, whatever they're doing for so long, and they, they say things like, well, I got to go learn all of this new stuff because this is what all of the new people are doing. But guys, there's a difference in um, uh, trendy stuff and foundational stuff. The principal things are going to last. So oftentimes when I get people who've been in their industry for a long time and they've been doing it a certain way, I don't encourage them to go learn 50 different things. I may encourage them to get even better at what it is that they do because there is a lane for that. So, so many of you who may dispel the fact that you do the bomb, um, you know, silk press, <laughs> you know, whatever it is that you do, um, maybe if you're a personal stylist, maybe your lane is dressing the professional woman. So maybe it's not all of the trendy colors and all of that other stuff. There's a lane for that, right? 
You just become really, really good at that. Understand who you are as a brand. Know the trends, but don't be trendy if you want it to last, is what Miss Rhonda said. Now, I'm saying you can add a little flavor to it. But if you change every time there's a new trend, that means you're constantly going to have to feel like you need to change. And many of you have an expertise that is being overlooked because you haven't gotten delivered from people, right? The opinions of other. Popular does not mean profitable. I'm going to say that one more time. Popular does not mean profitable. It may give you a good run. But most of the time when we're running our business only on the trends, now that's different from saying you need to understand technology. I think in today's times, it's important that you understand some technology. Those are like principle, those are foundational building blocks for, you know, the business, right? But there, then again, there are people who still use their appointment book, but they're few and far in between, right? And if they are, those people have been so consistent, so consistent that they, you know, customers are still just coming out of the, the woodwork um, for them. But I think there are some tools that we can use now that help us to do business quicker, sooner, faster that we may learn that are new. But popular is not always profitable. It's often, you'll often have to find yourself switching lanes all the time. And then those lanes never connect to your overall vision. So if you knew that what it is you wanted would definitely happen, this is a question I want you guys to think about. If you knew that what, it, what you ultimately want, that the vision that's further out from where you are now would, was going to happen, there was a guarantee that it would happen, how would you show up differently daily? That dream, that thing that you really desire, like the end result, like this is how I really want to be flowing. So maybe you have a desire to have a million dollar business. And so maybe you're at, you know, 10K a month now and you set your goal for next year for 20K a month because you're ultimately trying to get to this thing. But if you knew that that million dollars was possible for you and it becomes possible when you believe it. Because once you believe it, then you stay on the path of expectation and you show up in that manner. But if you knew that th whatever it is that you want to happen, if you want to, um, you know, have team members to, to go out and duplicate uh, a process or something that you've done, if you want to create a signature course, so maybe you have been in your industry for quite some time and you eventually want to create a signature course that you can teach online and you can teach, you know, um, in your community as well or in person as well if you knew that that thing would happen how would you show up differently daily what would you be doing in your business daily because you already know this is going to transpire what is it that you would be doing differently if you ask yourself that one thing that's probably how you need to head it doesn't mean that you're going to stop necessarily what you're doing now but if you knew that thing would happen how would you need to show up differently and what would you be doing daily what moves would you be making if you knew that thing that you ultimately want to have was going to happen this is going to help you when you're trying to decide what courses to take what classes to take because in your mind you know that this thing is going to happen you're going to show up differently so i want you guys to think about what is it that i really said i wanted to transpire in my business ultimately when i opened and then if you know that that's what you want how do you need to show up differently daily? What moves do you need to make in your right now season that will be a seed for that thing that you ultimately want? Do any of you have any questions? Anybody may be struggling with um, staying in their flow or holding on to the vision that they have for their business. And I can offer you some support uh, while we're on this morning. Anyone have questions about that? Two things. We still have spaces left for our retreat, August 3rd through the 5th, www.strategicleadershipgrowth.com. Uh, time is like really winding down, but it's not too late. Luckily for those of you who have been sitting on the fence, um, all of the information is on that link. And then secondly, 
Uh, my enrollment is open for my year-long mastermind. So for those of you who are in a position where you feel like you want to rebrand your business, like I've been doing this for a while, I've changed, but my business hasn't changed to match who I am now. I'm looking for my, more time freedom. I need an exit strategy in my business and I need to plan it out and get some steps and some support. I want more time freedom. I want to earn more revenue. One of my goals for my mastermind members when we started was that we three to five X our income either monthly or um, over, you know, the year. And several of them at the six month time frame have, you know, one young lady says she thinks she's quadrupled. Um, one, her investment, but many of them have three times uh, their income. I have one young, la young lady that was maybe at 30, 40 uh, a year. And so that's what maybe 3,600. Uh, a month, I can't remember, who is now making that weekly, making that weekly, and we've been doing it for six months. So that enrollment is open for 2020. It is a year long, like an incubator for those of you who really want to brand your business on a different level, put new systems, you want extended coaching throughout the year. Um, and then we also do like a meetup. So everybody comes from all different places. Uh, and we meet up together. We do a one-day intensive that's included in that mastermind. But the 2020 segment for enrollment is now open. And there's actually a place on my business page now uh, where I shared, I did like a three-part video series that kind of gives you some clarity on branding and moving forward in your business. And when you go and watch that video, it's going to send you to a landing page. At the end of the landing page, it gives you an opportunity to register. And what happens when you register, you answer maybe about five questions. And then we hop on a call. I tell you all of the things that's included in the mastermind because it, it's a lot of things that are included. You get not only group coaching time, but you get private coaching time with me. Um, it's just so many benefits to being able to work with me in an incubator for an entire year. And that link is on that page. I believe it's bit.ly slash bbp2020 bit.ly slash bbp2020 so for those of you who are like look i've been in the industry for quite some time i need an exit strategy and i want to start earning revenue from it um now you want to create a course or become an educator for a specific skill set, you're a salon owner, you want to develop a team. Um, this is not only for the salon industry. So when you see the video, it may say salon because I created the video uh, series about two years ago now, right before I first launched the mastermind. So it is for service-based business owners, coaches, and salon professionals. So if you provide a service to another individual, um, it would be ideal for you. But the best way for us to know if it would work for you is for us to hop on a call. So you can go watch those three videos, get a piece of pen and paper so that you can actually work through um, the exercises that I give you. It's going to give you another level of clarity. And then there's a place to register to the bottom and then you can expect a call from me within um, 24 to 72 hours. Any questions? how to maintain momentum and continue growing your business. I've been getting several people who were coming to me who were in situations that now they got to spend 90 days to 60 days putting a strategy in place. And they also have to try to maintain in, in that slow time or in that loss of income or whatever, because it's happening. I mean, like several people uh, who were connecting to me. So you know, sometimes it's just a matter of saying, I am going to, if I don't slow down, this is just going to be a cycle. I got to risk slowing down for just a minute. You know, I got to risk making the investment of time or money to get the answers so that this isn't a repeated cycle for me um, every year because there is a way to do it different. You guys have a super, super amazing day. I appreciate you all as always. And thank you, Ms. Rhonda. I saw you coming in with all those hearts on Periscope. I appreciate you and I love you, girl. And Shawanda, everybody else that's on, thank you for joining this morning. You guys have a super amazing weekend. Those of you sitting on the fence about a retreat, click the button, click the button, come. Your life, you will not look at your life and your business the same. That's my promise.